which is based on our analysis that shows that what people want from a bank is on the one hand something dependable, solid, like the shell of the egg, and on the other hand something soft, reassuring, sympathetic, like the yolk <laughs> is What the bloody hell are you going on about? <laughs> uh, I've two words to say to that. Shite! <laughs> uh, what's the other one? Shite! <laughs> Alright, it's Matt, welcome back to the shop. That's gonna sound horrible. Alright, it's Matt, welcome back to the shop. And today we are doing nothing on the board. Today I'm going to quickly just go through um I'm going to go through uh something that's brought up in the live stream actually, which is about um or something we call hyputetric pistons. So that's hyper, so there's hyperutetric and there's hypoutetric eutetric. So, what is hypotetric? You may have used, you may have heard it, um, especially discussed with pistons. You might have others. You've fucking never heard of it before. So, um, what we need to talk about is we need to talk about heat. We need to talk about um, pistons, and we need to talk about piston speed briefly before we get into all the angles, rod to stroke angles, and blah blah. Those are missing those. Uh, well, I'm missing a blah there. Blah blah blah. Um, so the way it works is that uh, if you want more power, you need higher temperatures. Um, the uh, pressure in your cylinder is um, proportional to the um, directly proportional to the. Um, oh, fucking hell! Temperature. So when the temp, we basically we burn fuel to create heat. This is why they're called heat engines. And I'll go more into this in the engine 101, or I think I already have. Um, but basically what happens is is that we want heat. We want the biggest heat gradient we can get. And I'll do a video in a minute, actually, about... Um, I did a video about thermal gradients, but I think it needs more explaining than what I did in that video. Um, or there's more to it. Um, but basically we want more heat, because more heat in a, a, of a gas inside a... Um, constrained volume will mean that the pressure will go up. Heat is energy. If the atoms inside that gas uh, have more energy, if they're more excited, if they have more energy, then they be, when they hit um, the walls of your enclosed cylinder, they have higher speeds, which means they impart a greater force, because force is mass times acceleration. So, um, you know, when they hit and bounce back off, that force, that speed, that velocity, um, and that deacceleration, that's what it's all about, because they've gone from the velocity they had, and now they've now stopped and then bounced back off. And when they hit that surface, that change, that deacceleration, is your acceleration part of force, and the mass is the mass of the particle. Um, and we're talking about atoms here. So there's your force times, uh, force times acceleration, and our acceleration decrease, and that's the amount of energy that the force that it can impart onto that surface. Um, you've got your cylinder head, your cylinder walls, a thin sliver of your combustion chamber, and you've got your piston, and that force is applied to all surfaces, and it's a force to your piston. So if we can increase the heat, we can increase the pressure, we increase the pressure, we increase the force that the piston acts against the piston, hence we get more torque at the crankshaft, which over time is converted into power. Bingo! We've got more powerful engine. However, we have a limitation. And we still have this limitation. The limitation is what the piston is made from. Because heat is the important thing. Now, you'd say, well, yeah, but my, my cylinder head made out of aluminium. Yes, it is. And your cylinder head is also cooled. Well, your piston is not directly cooled, especially by a coolant system like your cylinder and like your cylinder head is. And that's the important thing. Now, in the future, we'll, we will do the, the pivotal piston because that is one of the benefits of that is to have um, a through uh, current uh, coolant flow, which is brilliant. Um, but basically, we are restricted by the, the material choice that we have for the piston. Now, you'd say to yourself, well, why don't we just make it out of steel? Because then if we make it out of steel, it can go all the way up to, I think, six, seven, eight hundred degrees, eight hundred degrees, then you start to get into the, oh, it's getting a bit weak now titanium stuff like that well the thing is is that aluminium is really light and it is also good at conducting heat 
a lot better than steel and titanium. The other problem is, is if you go for steel, steel is you know a hell of a lot heavier. Number two is you aren't really getting that much of a benefit. Um, you are to a degree, but there are other problems with steel. It's thermal expansion. Um, other problems with if uh, when you have cylinder to uh, piston contact, which you always do because you always have side slap, some degree of side slap with a normal regular Conrad piston engine. Um, uh, the interaction between a cast iron and a steel line, uh, a cast iron liner or a nickel coated versus a piston that's made out of steel would be all horrible. So we basically we go with aluminium. It's light and um, it's quite stiff and it's you know it's good at transferring heat and for something that has, that something that is oil cooled by jet squirters by uh, oil on the side of the cylinder walls by um, wrist pin feed from the actual crankshaft stuff like that uh, aluminium is a good choice but it has its limitation in its melting temperature um, it actually even before its melting temperature where it starts to be you know become quite um, elastic and stuff like that you know um, when it basically gets, you know, it creeps towards its actual uh, melting temperature, it gets all jellyfied and a bit weird and a lot weaker. Um, so yes, you know, aluminium is a great choice, but what can, what did, what could they do to increase the performance of aluminium? And that's where hypertetric alloys come in. So a hypertetric alloy is when you take one thing and another thing. So you have aluminium, and then you have silicon. Just say, for instance, which is what they use generally. Um, and these have two totally different uh, melting temperatures and when you add them together it increases the melting temperature of that mix, that alloy, as a whole. So if you had steel and aluminium and you mix them together 50-50 you are going to have globules and you know, nucleation sites of steel and then aluminium just crusty crusty around it and when you chuck it in a bucket and melt it the aluminium will just melt away from the steel. You've got to properly mix um, these alloys in certain steps and sequences and obviously to get them to bond together properly. If you just put 50% and 50% together, don't say thermite, you're not just going to instantly get thermite, you are going to get a, a mix, of a, a, you know, and as the piston heats up, the piston will start to melt where it's aluminium and it'll stay just glowing hot where it's steel. You need a, an alloy that actually bonds together and, start, and basically becomes a different material. Um, just a composite material, which is what alloys are, and you know it's like you cannot scratch chromium out of stainless steel. It is in the steel. It is part of the structure. Um, so yeah, the um, hypertetric pistons are ones that have 12% silicon off the top of my head. 12% silicon, and basically what that does is that increases the melting temperature of these aluminium alloys. And the beauty about that is, is that these alloy pistons can now be, you know, run harder, run at hotter temperatures, so you can get more power. Um, Hypo eutetric, H Y P O eutetric, uh, and I'll put the words uh, now you spell them up on here. Hypo eutetric is the is the reverse. It's where you have two things that have a melting temperature. You put them together, and it is lower than the lowest one. So you are dropping the um, melting temperature of a particular substance. Um, so that's what hypo and hypertetric. If you ever see, it's a thing that was banded around in the 1960s and 70s as kind of like a sales pitch thing. It's kind of a thing now that it's basically pretty much standard as far as I know. Um, with nearly all manufactured, you know, manufactured pistons, um, be it steel, be it billet, machined, you know, forged, whatever, you know, uh, whichever piston it is, it's pretty much. Um, the same regardless, generally they use high silicon content aluminium pistons. And okay, basically that's what you're looking for. Hope that makes sense and I'll see you in a bit.